Oh, you've got to be kidding me. And I bet you the vacuum is full. Okay, Google, send Max to the trash can. All right, sending Max to get empty. Okay, Google, have Max clean the playroom. Okay, sending Max to clean the playroom. Hey everyone, it's Ryan with This Smart House, and today we're gonna do a video that has been requested by quite a few people in the comments of my previous Roborock videos how to create zones in Home Assistant to tell your vacuum to clean. Now, I've had a few users ask things like, hey, can I tell my vacuum to go ahead and go to just the living room, vacuum the living room and dock, um, without having to open up the app? Obviously, I showed you last time, you can set up a special card that will let you drag and select a zone and then say, clean that zone. But there was no automated way to just say, clean living room or clean playroom or what happened, whatever it happens to be. And the cool side effect of this is you can also tie this into a Google Assistant routine or an Alexa routine if you have Alexa, and say, tell your assistant, hey, go clean that room with a voice command. So I finally sat down, went through all the automations, went through all of the documentation. I have a good method to create this type of zone management for your vacuums. So there are a few different ways of doing this specific thing. Um, the way I'm doing it may not be the most efficient, but I figured it'd be the easiest and uh, be able to apply to the most people. Now for me, I get the most use out of this, like I, like I showed in the intro, where I'll tell the Google Assistant to go ahead and clean a specific room, especially after my kids have spilled cereal somewhere, crackers, chips, whatever happens to be, usually gets spilled and then gets run over by the kids. So it's nice and extra broken up into small pieces. So much harder to just pick up and throw away. So I usually tell the Google Assistant to tell my vacuum, which is named Max, go ahead and clean whatever the room is or the area is that the kids have destroyed. So in today's video, we're gonna show you how to find and define the different zones on a map so you can define which room is what coordinates. These coordinates are used by the vacuum services to tell it where to move to. I'll show you how to build Home Assistant scripts, automations, and helpers to be able to select those zones in your Home Assistant instance uh, Loveless display. And then finally, how to quickly build a routine in Google Assistant to be able to use voice commands to send your vacuum to specific rooms. All right, before we get started with the actual setup, let's go ahead and review the prerequisites that are required. Now, the first thing you should have done is watch my video on Roborock or Xiaomi vacuum integration with Home Assistant. So if you watch that previous video, you should have three things. One, the vacuum will already be set up in Home Assistant so you can control it by sending it commands like dock, start, and see its statistics like fan speed, uh, last time bins were empty, things like that. And one quick side note, uh, it looks like in the new version of the Mio integration, which is what the Xiaomi and Roborock vacuums use, you can actually just add it in with username and password and you don't need the token anymore. So, so that's a cool addition. You still need the token for the map extractor, but you don't need it to add the vacuum to actually to Home Assistant. The second thing you're gonna need is the Xiaomi map extraction camera. Um, I showed you how to set that up in the previous video. And the third item would be the Xiaomi map card. This is the one that allows you to select different zones by drawing them on the map and then clicking execute to send the vacuum to that area to clean. Now, if you're missing any of these things, make sure to go back and watch that video again. I've got links in the card above, or you can go to this link here below. All right, so with the basics out of the way, let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into my test environment here. I'll go ahead and review the elements that we've previously set up in the last video. So the top card here is just an entity that shows the basic integration for any vacuum in Home Assistant. Uh, you'll see things like battery levels, sending basic commands, changing some attributes, things like that. The next one down is just an example of the map, the map extraction card that we set up at the last one, showing all the zones that you have already set up um, in your Mi Home app. And that's just inside of the custom card that has a, a bit more uh, features on there. And then finally, this one is the Xiaomi map card. And this is the one that allows you to define zones by dragging an area and then clicking start, or you can set the number of times you want to clean that area. Or you can go to go to target and set a specific location and send the vacuum there just to, to park. So we're gonna use this card here to go ahead and extract the coordinates that are necessary to send the zone commands back into the vacuum. And that may sound complicated, but once I show you, it's actually quite easy. So the first thing we need to do is jump in, edit the UI, click edit on the card itself, and you'll notice we, we just had the basics in here. Uh, the type of the card is the vacuum map card. 
Insti is my vacuum. Obviously, this needs to be changed for your vacuum. Uh, the map camera comes from the cloud, the cloud map extractor, and then the camera calibration just tells it to reference the camera to pull the calibration coordinate. Now below this, we we'll need to just add debug true, and then click save. What this is gonna do is instead of initiating the command to send the vacuum to the specific zone, it's going to actually pop up in our browser and show us the coordinates that we've selected. So the first thing we're gonna do is, is we're gonna establish a position. So if there's a specific location you wanna send your vacuum to, so in my case, I send it to you right in front of my trash can. That way it's very quick and easy for me to go ahead and just dump out the bin. Uh, it's actually right next to my sink as well so I can fill up the water if I'm doing mop mode. So you'll see actually on my example here, the vacuum is already in that position. So if we select go to target, I can click a position on the map and then I can hold down the start button and when I release it, it's gonna give me a X, Y coordinate that we'll wanna go ahead and copy and keep someplace safe. So if you wanna open up a notepad, we'll just paste that in there and we'll just say, this is the trash can. You can find as many of these as you want, wherever you want in your house. Um, I just use this for one position in my house. So let's define the zones we need. Let's go ahead and change mode to zone cleanup and we'll go ahead and highlight an entire area. So this is my living room. Obviously, if you go over the boundaries and you're telling it to clean out in the middle of nowhere, it just won't go there because obviously the vacuum sensors, sensors are gonna tell it, hey, there's a wall there, it's gonna stop. So now that I've highlighted that particular area, again, I'll click and hold start. And this time, you'll notice a five number array. These are the coordinates, the bounding box that's defined, and then the number of times for cleaning. So if I were to change this to times two and click start, I'm gonna get a two in that box. So for the Xiaomi integrations, it doesn't use that, it calls out in a separate field, but we'll go ahead and just highlight the entire thing just to get started. So let's grab this whole one, pop back into here, and we'll paste in, call this living area. And then I'll grab a couple more, so we'll do this. So, oh, and make sure you delete the old ones. If not, you'll get two sets of coordinates. So I'll, this is my kitchen table here. Set that back to one, hold down start. Grabbing a few more of these. So now we have a few examples. Um, I won't obviously do all the rooms because that'll just take forever. You can now take these particular coordinates, we can feed these into our service commands and then the vacuum will go to those specific areas. But before we do that, we can make a quick mod to this card itself and we can go ahead and add permanent zones to this card so you can click on them and tell the vacuum to go there. So we can get rid of the debug now. So you don't want to leave debug on because it won't, won't allow you to use this card properly. But then we can use zones, put a hyphen there and then we'll go ahead and paste in some of these zones that we've already defined. And then we'll click save. So now you'll notice, when we go back into the card, we have a new option called zones. We click zones and it shows the locations of the two zones that we've, we've defined. Uh, curious, it's actually in red, um, but they're clickable, so you can enable and disable them, and then tell it to start to clean those zones. This is an easy way, if you wanna use the visual map, say on a phone or a tablet, you can define all the zones and then just walk up to the map, hit click the zone, click start, and you're off and running. So that's one way of controlling specific zones, but we're gonna do a cooler one here in a second. So all right, so now that we have our zones designated, let's go ahead and move into creating the components in Home Assistant. The first component we're gonna create is the input select that we need to select which zone we're gonna clean. So to do that, we need to head to configuration, helpers, add helper, drop down, and give it a name like vacuum zone. Give it whatever icon you'd like, and then here's where you're gonna define your different options that you want to be able to select. So this will be the list of all of your rooms in your house that you wanna have uh, the vacuum be able to access. So in my example, we'll just do playroom, living room, kitchen table. And then um, I'm, I designate one for the trash can, I call it maintenance. And I put that in parentheses just so it's easier to find. With all those created, now let's go ahead and create the individual scripts we'll need to call both in this automation and also using the Google Assistant later on. So let's pop over to configuration, scripts, and um, I've got some example scripts in here, but I'll go ahead and take you through how I created each of them. So there are two different types of scripts that we're going to create. One for a point and one for a zone. So the first one we're gonna do is we're gonna create a script to tell the vacuum to go to a specific point in your house. Now one thing on scripts is once you change the name, it locks the slug or the entity ID in place and you're not able to change it in here. So I'd recommend making sure you get the title that you want correct. Uh, and the other point too is when you create a script, if you use a, a special character like a dash or a hyphen, when it creates the slug, it's gonna add 
three underlined, which are not gonna be able to be accepted. So if you continue to get an error, make sure you check your entity ID and make sure that only has one underline per word because it'll error out if it has more than one in there. So just remember those things. So go, let's go back. So the first thing we're gonna do is let's go ahead and do the one, uh, the script for a specific point in your house. So it's just gonna be a call service. And what we're gonna be using is the vacuum.send underscore command. There are a whole variety of different vacuum commands, but I find this is the best one for going to a specific point and stopping. So what we'll do is we'll select the target. So in this case, the, my target is my vacuum, which I only have one. If you have more than one, make sure you select the right target. For command, it's gonna be app underscore go to underscore target. Now all this information can be also found in uh, Peter Marchowski's repo on GitHub, which I'm gonna link right here below. And of course, this is all of the repos that I used in the last video. If you wanna reference the different parameters, you can do that by going to this link. So again, we've selected the target, which is the entity ID. We've selected the command, which is app underscore go to underscore target. And then for parameters, we are going to input that array that we selected in the, the last step. So in my case, it's just the two digits, which is the X and Y coordinates. You'll notice though, once you put it in, here. So if you put it in in this array format in two uh, straight brackets, it's going to convert those into bullet points or convert them into dashes. So don't be surprised when you put this in here and it changes. That's perfectly fine. It's just that's how uh, Home Assistant stores it. So I've got the and under parameters, I've got the location and click save script. Now if I were to call this script from anything, it's going to tell the vacuum go ahead and move to this point and stop. So for the second type of script that we're gonna create, we're gonna create one that will tell it to clean a specific zone. So here I have one for the playroom, and this uses a different service. So we're gonna call service xiaomi underscore mio dot vacuum underscore clean underscore zone. So it's one of the custom services that's created for the Xiaomi Mio vacuums, which of course Roborock and um, Mi Home both are the same. We will select this service. Again, select the target is your, is your vacuum. Uh, the number of repeats you can set down here, um, one, two, or three. I just have mine set to one. And then for zone. Now, this zone is that same, we did it in the last step. So we take one of the zones that we defined before. So this is playroom. So that's this one down here. Copy that. And again, paste it into the zone field. We need to remove the comma one because we're defining the number of repeats down here. And again, once you save this, we'll click save script and we're gonna refresh this page. You'll notice it's gonna break it into this hyphen, space, hyphen, space, and then each of the numbers. So again, you can always paste back in a new value if you wanted to here, but it's always gonna reformat into those, into the array in that format. So now that we got that saved, repeat this for as many of the different rooms that you want to have zones defined in that dropdown. So make sure you have one, one script for each of those drop downs in your list. Now you could do this without the scripts. You could actually write the automation to just call directly each of these services, but I am using scripts because then I can also independently call those scripts using the Google Assistant or the Alexa integration and be able to use those using a voice command. So that's why I am doing it that particular way. So if you wanna create a new one, um, just select the, the type of script that you want. So in this case, I'm gonna be doing another zone. So I'm gonna edit the living room zone. Click the three dots, duplicate script, and again, make sure you give it the right name. And then when it clicks on entity ID here, make sure you delete those extra underscores. That way it won't cause an error message in the future. And then everything else is gonna stay the same, except for we're gonna change that array to this one here. We'll paste that in and then delete that extra number. Click save. And so now if we go to our scripts, we have four scripts to match our four items in our input select. So before we do that, we need to actually build the automation that's gonna cause it to happen. We wanna add a new automation, uh, start with a new one. We'll call this one execute vacuum zone. Since this is gonna be manually triggered, we don't need to have a trigger here. So we'll delete the trigger. And then under action, we're gonna call a service. Now, one thing to note is that when the vacuum is executing a zone cleanup or a go-to location, you can't send it another zone cleanup command. It will actually just ignore that command and continue to doing what it was doing. You have to stop the vacuum or send it to another command, like go home, go back to the dock uh, before it'll take another input. So I will actually add a stop command here. I'll tell the vacuum to stop, delay three seconds, and then execute the command. That way, if you do accidentally say, send it to the playroom and think, oh no, I need to send it to the living room. When you select that drop down, click living room and hit execute, it'll actually tell it to stop, wait a second, 
and then run the second command. That way it won't get ignored. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and call service. And this is just a simple vacuum and then stop. And we'll select our Roborock vacuum from the list. Then we're gonna do a delay and we're gonna delay about three seconds. And then finally, we're going to call the service and this is going to be, this is going to be script, turn on. So let's go ahead and flip over to the edit in YAML and then I'll show you the code that I'm using. Now, of course, all this code is available on my, the blog post for this particular video, which I've got a link for right here. It's also in the description below. Uh, so you can go ahead and just copy paste that, but I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick description of what each of these lines are doing. So if we look here, we've got a, you've got the service script turn on, which is what we already have in the YAML down here. Data template, because we're gonna be using a template for doing an if then statement. And then under the entity ID, we have this if statement. Now I have this broken out into a more readable format because as soon as you paste this into Home Assistant, it's gonna place it on a single line and then it's gonna add some line breaks in there and it's really hard to read from there. So I'll show you here and then I'll paste it in. So we have the input. So if state of the input select vacuum zone dot state equals playroom, which is the selection that's in there, then it's going to send the entity ID of script vacuum playroom. So that's the name of that script. So it's going to execute this script. And continuing down, we have an if, else if that same input is living room, then do the, then send the living room script. Same thing with a trash can. And the only thing I'm missing on here is I don't have one for my kitchen table. So then if I want to add another line, I'll just copy it and paste it in and then change the what it's looking for and then the name of the script. Which of course you can always go to the developer tools if you're looking for the specific names for each of these scripts if you happen to forget. And then finally I have if it equals maintenance then send it to the trash can. So we'll copy this script here, go back in and paste this into our YAML section here and then hit save. And then I usually try to refresh it to make sure there wasn't an error and it dropped out something. So now it has, you'll see now it's kind of put it in that compressed format that we talked about before, but that's fine. Um, you can always just read through it line by line and edit it if you need to in the future. So, so now that we've got our input select, our scripts and our automation set up, let's go ahead and add those elements to the UI. So we have a nice little button that we can use to select which vacuum zone we want to clean. So I'll go back to my vacuum view in my UI, hit edit dashboard, add a card, and this card, we'll just do a simple entities card. And let's change this to our input select. And now this is something that kind of a hacky way I figured out how to add an automation button to run something is using this new footer section in the entity card. And you'd think it'd be a button, but I couldn't get that to work. So I'm actually using a picture entity and then using this tap action to tell it where to go. By default, it puts this balloon picture in here, which you can use if you want to. So I've created a, an image that can be stored just on your local Home Assistant instance, and it's it's also available in the blog post that is linked below. Just called run.png, and it's just a simple run graphic. It's terrible. Feel free to use it if you want to, but I just have it in here. So then under this tap action here, I have a little bit of code that um, is also in the blog post, but we'll step through it here real quick. Uh, it's just a simple tap action function that does a call service. It auto calls automation.trigger and you just put the entity ID of the automation in here. So in this case, it's execute vacuum zone and then we hit save. So what that's gonna do, so now if we X out of this, you'll notice that I can now tell, I now have the options to set any of those locations and then click run. So now I can select the living room and if you watch the map down here, when I click run, it's going to you'll see the box appear over the living room here in a second to indicate that it's going to that zone. So there it is. So that means that now the vacuum is traveling, it's gonna be cleaning this zone here itself. And again, like I said, now with that specific automation, I can click on here and actually tell it to go. Instead, let's go to the playroom or the kitchen table. I'll click playroom. And when I click run, it told it to stop. And then it's going to wait the three seconds and it's gonna send it to go back to the playroom. So again, it's a bit delayed. If you're actually listening to the vacuum, you can hear it say stop, stop zone cleaning and then doing a new zone cleaning. So now you'll see the box has changed to the playroom. So now it's heading to the playroom to clean that particular room. So there you go. Now you have an easy to use drop down that you can set to send the vacuum to any part of the house you want and clean that zone. And then when it's done, it'll go ahead and head back to the dock and finish.
So in this last part, it'll be hopefully quick and easy. I'll just show you how to, how to very fast set up a Google Assistant routine so that you can, you can use voice commands to send the vacuum also to different zones. So on this last section, um, we will, I'll go ahead and show you how to set up a routine in Google Assistant to allow you to use voice commands to run these individual zones with your vacuum. So first thing we need to do is, and this is my example, I'm using the Nabucasa integration for Google Assistant. So if you are using a different version, you'll have to adapt it separately. And also if you're using the Alexa integration, I'm assuming it's something very similar. So feel free just to kind of map that over um, using these same steps. So uh, we'll go into configuration, Home Assistant Cloud, and then we're gonna scroll down here to our Google Assistant, which I'll have to blur all this out. Click on Manage Entities, and you wanna make sure that you have either all of your scripts set to be exposed. You have to expose the specific script that you want. So the search through here, if everything we use Word Vacuum, and here we go, we've got one that's not exposed outside Google Assistant. So I'll click Expose Entity, and then I'll go back here and then click Sync Entities to Google. And that will basically refresh the list in Google Assistant. So now we'll need to open up our Google Assistant app on whatever platform that you happen to be using it on. We'll click on the routines and we'll click the plus symbol. So what this routine is gonna allow us to do is give a custom name to our particular thing. So instead of having to say, turn on clean living room or run clean living room, you'll be able to just say clean the living room or tell the vacuum to clean the living room or whatever it happens to be. So we'll create a new routine, click add starter, voice command, and this is whatever voice command you wanna be able to use for it. So say clean, the kitchen table. Click done. And then we'll shift over to this routine well. Click add action. And then we're gonna go ahead and select adjust home devices. Adjust scenes. So vacuum clean kitchen table is here. So we'll go ahead and select that. Click done. Now we have the scene that we want selected. I also like to add a custom response for it to send back to us. So we'll go to communicate and announce, say something. Hit done and save. So now we have a custom routine that we can use to tell your vacuum to go there. So we'll, I'll just use my phone as an example. Now the hardest part is to remember the exact phrase. Have Max clean under the kitchen table. All right, so that's now running. Now there you go. Now you have the ability to send the vacuum to a specific location and have it clean. All right, so now you have a functional setup where you can use either the map to tell the vacuum where to go. You can use the drop down to send the vacuum to a specific room to clean, or you can use your Google Assistant to tell your vacuum to go ahead and clean a specific room. I hope you enjoyed this kind of long video. Uh, these are kind of more detail oriented videos. So hopefully this answers the questions if this is what some of the, one of the things that you've been looking to get an answer for for quite a while. I have another Roborock vacuum video coming up next week that I'm hoping to address some more questions people have been asking me specifically on what can be done with the vacuum integration in Home Assistant. So please stay tuned for more videos like that. Uh, just a reminder, we do have a new Discord channel. Go ahead and jump on the Discord server and let us know what questions you have and I'll hopefully be able to answer them in a fairly quick time frame or leave your questions in the comments below. As always, if you have suggestions for videos or you have things you want me to cover, add them to the comments below. It really helps um, when people can ask their questions and bounce ideas off other people. So feel free to contribute down below if you have questions or if you actually wanna contribute an answer, go ahead and do that as well. Again. Just as a reminder, make sure that you liked the video if you found usage out of it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and ring the notification bell to hopefully get notified about my new videos coming out the rest of this month and the rest of the summer. Thank you again for your time and have a wonderful rest of your week.